Um, so yeah, I'm Chris. Uh, I'm a well, I'm still ta currently a PhD student at uh, NTNU in Norway, and I'm here to talk to you about. Uh, and it, you know, because I I know everyone's thinking there aren't enough cryptocurrencies. Well, we thought, why don't we make a new one? Uh, and that's what we're doing here. So um, I'm introducing this idea, this graph chain, and it's a scalable and decentralized DAG solution. And I'll um, and whenever I think about DAG, I always think about the film Snatch. Uh, I don't know if you guys have seen it, but there's this scene where uh, the guy says dag a lot. It's, it's very funny. <laughs> <laughs> Any, no, but seriously, okay. So I'm going to I'm gonna go through an introdu uh, introduction, like what do what we really mean by a dag? Then I'm going to motivate their use. Then we're going to look at the graph chain framework, uh, going to talk about some of the design choices, the main challenges, and then what is happening now. So. Um, basically, in 2016, I was writing, I was in Australia, and I was working with two of uh, my co-authors, uh, a guy called Xavier Boyan and another guy called um, Thomas Haynes. Xavier Boyan's quite a famous guy in the crypto area. He works on IBE a lot, and Thomas Haynes was another PhD student at the time, and now he works in Trondheim in Norway, uh, where I work. And um, basically, we had this, we put this uh, paper up on what we call like this ePrint server that's like generally... Um, all cryptographic research tends to put their work here when it's kind of not published, but we want to show that we've done some work on stuff. Uh, it's since been published, um, and we also have this uh, like maybe a e much easier to read article in Ursim uh, News if anyone's interested. Um, and basically, the whole idea was what we wanted to do was we wanted to come up with a system that tried to address both scalability and decentralization at the same time. So, uh, what so what we have is this DAG-based design. And what do we mean by a DAG? Well, a DAG's kind of just um, a directed acyclic graph, and it's kind of just the mathematical term for a, for a graph, right? So um, we can kind of ignore all this. You sort of have this like vertices and edges, but hey, it sort of looks a bit like this. When you see DAGs, this is what they look like. Normally, they're depicted like this, right? You have vertices, and you have edges connecting the vertices. And it's acyclic because you can't start here and get back to here, right? You can't start here and get back to here. You go this way, but in this way, and this way, but you can't go this way, this way, and this way because the, there's arrows, right? And uh, another DAG example, for instance, one we might be more familiar with is uh, blockchain. A uh, blockchain is a DAG. It's just got other rules as well, which make it even more constrained. For example, uh, that would be like a fork that would be ignored. Um, yeah, so the motivation, uh, what are we trying to address? Trying to address decentralization, and that's really affecting the security of the system, and we're trying to address usability. Um, and the question really was, do these issues stem from the use of blocks of transactions? Um, so the aim was to kind of create a system where you're rewarded for your individual effort, and can we remove the incentive for joining mining pools? Um, and hopefully we can allow faster transaction processing at the same time and kind of do this system where you're just broadcasting transactions with proof of work attached, collect transactions as they come in, build a graph, and then do we even need a block? Um, why decentralization? Well, the issue with decentralization is uh, if you look at, like, say, Bitcoin or Ethereum, I don't have graphs for, us, for this at the moment, but if you look at those systems at the moment, it's, we've all seen these images of uh, the mining pool control over these systems. And we even saw in Bitcoin a few years ago, one mining pool had the majority share of power in Bitcoin. Now, when uh, Satoshi Nakamoto, whoever they are, um, decide, wrote their original paper, they actually pointed out that this shouldn't have been a property, right? They don't want anyone to be able to control the system. And if we have, say, just three big organizations that have the majority of computational power on any of these systems, be it Bitcoin, be it Ethereum, be it any of those other sorts of systems, then essentially the security is compromised if we can compromise those three big players. Um, and, the, and the other interesting point is, for a long time, we've also known that 51% honest users is still not OK. You can still compromise your systems with, a, with much lower percentages. This is like, this works came out in like 2014. It's, uh, so, so couldn't we do something about this? Can we address this in a different way? Um, but a good question uh, that I'm often asked is, what is decentralization anyway? And it really is a tricky question, right? Because kind of what we mean is we want lots of independent machines all over the world running the same system. Um, and I suppose it would also be nice if the machines were kind of computationally equivalent. So 
you know, maybe we just all have a Raspberry Pi and everyone over the world's got one and it runs like that would be really nice. But that's not really what's happening. What's happening is we have mining pools, uh, people collecting their power, and we have mining farms, people just getting, buying loads and loads of machines, right? Um, the other issue is scale. And I suppose for most of you here, you don't really need these sorts of diagrams to that explain why we have this, but we have in blockchain in blockchain systems we have a block period and we have a certain we have time running across the side. We have a period where these blocks come in. If we have a set of transactions, we've got a set of transactions here, T, T1 to Tn, we've got a different set of transactions, T prime, T T1 prime to T n prime, and we don't know if T prime is equal to T. Right? In a blockchain system like the traditional sort of Bitcoin system, only one of those actually exists. You create the two blocks, maybe two blocks create at the same time, but only one of them ever really exists after the next block is chosen. In what I would call blockchain plus systems, the sort of stuff that's happening in Ethereum, you might, have, you might be able to collect this previous block, but you still ignore the transactions. And in DAG-based systems, which are starting to emerge, you, want, you actually connect both of these previous blocks and you connect both of their transactions. And this is exactly what's going on in what I'm presenting here. So um, the graph chain is essentially this idea of what if there's no blocks? Transactions just refer to previous transactions. Uh, as opposed to transaction, you just collect the transactions that you agree with, that you have seen, that you personally agree with, and you refer to them and to establish that you believe in them, that you believe in their authenticity, you attach some proof of work to the transaction. Um, so we can think of a proof of work function as like an abstract function, right? Um, abstract function could be anything where we have somehow quantifiable as to how hard it is to find a solution to a puzzle. So uh, most blockchains use hash functions, for example. And what we can do is we can broadcast these transactions and associated work value. So like just for a toy example, you might have this is the graph we saw before, and for each block, maybe the amount of work we can quantify as these happily integer numbers, right? Uh, and then with, but by doing this, we can then start to do, we can then start to form different uh, values on them. We can start to create these metrics of height and weight. And the idea of weight is kind of the cumulative amount of work associated with all transactions and its descendants. And height is the cumulative work associated with transactions and all of its ancestors. Um, just to show what that actually looks like, this would look like this, right? So similar to, similar to Bitcoin in the sense that you count how many blocks have come afterwards. Here you're just counting how much work has been connected to this, this transaction. And that would be, and we'd call this weight. And the other way around, if we're talking about height, you count the, uh, the amount of, you count the amount of, uh, you know, proof of work that connects to this uh, transaction here. So you can sort of say how, how high it is. And we have this other property where after a while you can, you can start to deplete really, really old transactions and so ignore the, ignore the graph later on. And this is kind of, this is a bit more in detail, but it's kind of important for getting rid of vastly uh, large computational um, problems that you would encounter if you kept all transactions alive. And what we really want is this idea of convergence. So we want this convergence that transactions just refer to previous transactions and what's stopping users creating new transactions at very old nodes. Well, we have this incentive, we have this incentive to work on the top of the graph. So we would say the transaction is converged at this green node here and we call that uh, convergence. So um, just to give a graph chain overview, uh, the idea is we create transactions at our own pace, rewarded for individual effort. We're trying to avoid the mining pools by allowing you to just work individually. You don't need to sign up with someone else. We encourage transactions at the top of the graph with incentive mechanisms to, for joining the top of the graph. You get rewarded more. We allow multiple transactions to be referenced uh, to quickly gain convergence. So we don't just uh, allow for two or so. We, you can capture as many as you want. And so we hope that, and so the idea, idea is that proof of work builds up closer to real time. And really the, proof, the framework is agnostic towards which function you want to choose. Um, so this is the only slide where I used a little bit of 
PowerPoint's nice design. Um, yeah, so this is, uh, this is something. So I work at NTNU, and this is basically where the work is coming from. And uh, we're teamed up with uh, Bitspace, who are actually developing this at the moment. Um, we're in early stages, but we, uh, we are close to having a website, and we are, <laughs> we are close to, uh, to getting on with this. We're at a very early stage, but we have funding, and um, we recently won some funding, and we're at the initial stage of the project. So, uh, yeah. Um, and of course, also this work has been published in academic peer review, which is another really important thing for this work. Um, yeah, anyway, uh, I won't read all these points. Thank you for listening. <laughs>